let, let me just have you trace, if you could, the history of The Tonight Show. Did it begin as a local daily night owl show on WNBT? Yes. Uh, everything that comes into material existence at a specific point on the time scale, of course, has roots, invisible roots, uh, tracing back to earlier points in time. Even though it, it was obviously one afternoon at 327, then a guy said, look at this, I've made the first safety pin or paper clip or whatever he created. He didn't get the idea for the paper clip, you know, eight seconds earlier. He might have had the idea three years earlier, and he sought financial backing, and he, you know, had a wife cook nice meals for him to make his brain work. A lot of stuff would have gone on, and then as a result of all that stuff, finally you have the paper clip. So it, the same thing pertains to the Tonight Show. I didn't uh, get an assignment and then by Tuesday show up and have the show all worked out. Much uh, of what the world now knows is The Tonight Show, especially as Johnny does it, and in another context as David Letterman does that kind of show, was worked out uh, in a kind of a casual three-year experiment on a late night show I did for the CBS radio station in Los Angeles in 1948, 49, and 50. Uh, Almost none of it was consciously planned in the sense in, in which I did plan the later Meeting of Minds show for PBS, or one might plan a game show or plan the 60 Minutes program. Those are formally structured. A talk show, by way of contrast, is very loose around the edges, not even terribly easy to define. Somebody sits there and he talks to other people, you know, big deal. <laughs> uh, but as I say, the, the various nuts and bolts of that structure I worked out on the radio even before I was regularly working in television. Then when CBS brought me to New York in, uh, well, starting January 1st or 2nd, 1951, I did a somewhat similar program for them, emphasizing comedy but incorporating conversation too, for three years. And then in 1953, I went over to the NBC station, they invited me, in New York, and I began doing the same kind of thing, but in this case at night, after 11 o'clock. And the show caught on immediately. It, it was a much bigger hit at 11 o'clock, or 11.30 at night than it had been uh, at 7 in the evening and 3 in the afternoon and its other times. And because of its immediate success, uh, the network decided to put it on all of its stations instead of just the one New York station. So that's how it came about. Uh, the person who made revisions in, in my formula, uh, what, uh, what I did is pretty much what Johnny has done for the last 25 years or so. But Jack Parr, who came after me and before Johnny, as I've said before, invented the couch, it was Jack's idea to put an actual sofa over to the right of his desk and uh, perch three or four people on it and have uh, amusing conversation with them for 90 minutes. I had occasionally done that. Uh, there's nothing much has been added to it that we didn't do first. But uh, during my four years uh, at the helm, uh, the show was a talk show, pure and simple, only on certain nights. Other nights, it wasn't a talk show at all. Um, some of our very best shows, in fact, came when we would book one great composer uh, or, or lyricist, uh, Johnny Mercer, Richard Rogers, um, Hoagy Carmichael, and we would do the whole show at the piano with, of course, the orchestra off camera. And uh, it would consist of 90 minutes of the music of Richard Rogers or whoever was our guest. He would sit at the piano. I would sit at the piano, Skitch Henderson would sit at the piano. We had sheet music strewn all over the top of the instrument. Andy Williams and Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet and Pat Kirby, our wonderful singers, would sit there. And it was wonderfully informal and among the best television shows. We couldn't possibly have rehearsed it all. Uh, the singers would spend a few quick minutes with uh, Skitch uh, deciding what keys they wanted to do certain numbers in and then I would do a few numbers and the guest would do a few numbers on his own. And so obviously that's A, great television, but B, not really a talk show. You know, whatever else it is, it's not what we think of when we think of a talk show. So uh, that's pretty much the size of it. If I were describing something one had never seen, I'd have to talk longer, but we all know what a talk show looks like. Yes, yes. 